In this video, we'll embark on a journey through the golden age of the Dutch coffee trade. A story of bold ambition and strategic superiority. We'll trace the Dutch East India Company's journey from monopolistic trading giant to cultural trendsetter as it introduced coffee to European society. We'll delve into the geopolitical struggles of the 17th and 18th centuries, learn about the key players who determined this course, and witness how the Dutch created a coffee culture that would conquer Europe. On our journey through history, however, we won't ignore the harsh realities of the time, the exploitation and human toll that came with the burgeoning coffee trade. And when we arrive in the present day, we'll reflect on how the reverberations of Dutch influence can still be felt in the coffee industry today. The Dutch entry into the coffee trade was no coincidence, but a calculated expansion of their flourishing trading empire. In the 17th century, the Dutch Republic was at the height of its naval power, which it used to carve out a significant niche for itself in the global coffee market. The Dutch East India Company, known as the Verenigde Oostindische Company, or VOC in Dutch, with its pioneering corporate structure, spearheaded this endeavor by traversing uncharted waters to secure coffee plants from the port of Mocha. This botanical ruse marked the beginning of coffee's global journey from the Middle East to the European continent and beyond. The geopolitical landscape of the time was a chessboard of colonial powers vying for supremacy, and the VOC's move to grow coffee in Java was a checkmate against the dominant Arab monopoly. The fertile Indonesian archipelago, which was under Dutch control, became a new epicenter for coffee cultivation and satisfied the Europeans' growing appetite for coffee. The strategic transplanting of coffee by the Dutch not only diversified the sources of supply, but also minimized the risks of supply disruptions, a foresight that underlined the commercial acumen of the VOC. Important figures such as Peter van den Broeke, who secured the first coffee seedlings for the Dutch, and Governor-General Jan Peter Zoon Cohen, whose policies promoted the VOC's dominance in the region, came to the fore. Their actions prepared the ground for the spread of coffee cultivation to Java, Sumatra, and beyond, laying the foundations for a trade network that would eventually extend across the world's oceans. The integration of the coffee trade into the Dutch economy was characterized by the flow of beans across the Rhine, which connected the Dutch Republic with the German hinterland. This trade route contributed decisively to the spread of coffee and other goods, and linked them to the social and economic fabric of Europe. The Rhine became a transit route for the Dutch coffee trade, which ensured that the beans reached new markets and changed consumer habits on the continent. When we examine the historical roots and early expansion of the Dutch coffee trade, we recognize a pattern of strategic innovation and the exploitation of geopolitical shifts. The role of the VOC in this story is not only about trade, but also about the emergence of a globalized economy and the interplay of trade, culture, and power. The VOC was not just a trading company, but an empire within an empire, whose influence reshaped the global coffee trade. Its entry into the coffee market in the 17th century was characterized by a mixture of mercantile ambition and maritime skill, with which it steered the path of coffee from the exotic ports of Yemen to the bustling markets of Europe. The VOC's monopoly on the coffee trade was a masterpiece of economic strategy. By controlling cultivation in Java and Ceylon, the VOC was able to dictate terms in a market that quickly became a European obsession. Coffee, once a luxury good, was now a commodity that the VOC had a firm grip on. Its plantations, a patchwork of colonial greenery, became the centerpiece of coffee production, producing vast quantities of beans that filled the cups of Europe's burgeoning coffee houses. The VOC's naval fleet, a formidable force on the high seas, was the lifeline of the company and ensured that the precious cargo also reached the distant shores. However, this supremacy invited competition. The British and French, jealous of the Dutch monopoly, began to grow their own coffee in the Caribbean and South America, laying the foundations for a global rivalry that would develop over the centuries. The integration of coffee into the Dutch economy by the VOC was no small feat. It was a deliberate and calculated move that capitalized on the flourishing European appetite for coffee. The profits from the coffee trade were substantial, contributing significantly to the Dutch gross domestic product and cementing the Netherlands' status as a trading giant of the time. 
The trade networks of the VOC were the sinews and muscles of the Dutch economic system, wielding their power across the seas. These networks were not only channels for coffee, but also for a variety of other commodities that fueled economic activity in different sectors. The trade in coffee and other commodities catalyzed the growth of ancillary industries, from shipping to finance, all of which played a central role in the economic fabric of the Dutch Republic. The economic influence of the VOC was multifaceted. It was a harbinger of modern capitalism and pioneered the economy that would lay the foundations for today's economic practices. But it was also a clear reminder of the injustices of the time, as the wealth accumulated came at a price. Forced labor and exploitation were the basis for the VOC's economic success. The coffee trade thus became a double-edged sword that cut through the fabric of society and left behind a complex and controversial image. In the turbulent waters of the 17th and 18th centuries, the Dutch and British empires clashed, their ships and ambitions intertwined in the quest for supremacy in world trade. The Anglo-Dutch Wars, a series of conflicts fueled by economic rivalry, were emblematic of the fierce competition for commodities such as coffee, which quickly became Europe's black gold. The Dutch had secured an impressive presence in the East Indies through the VOC, and had a firm grip on the coffee trade as well as the spices, which they had monopolized. But the English, fueled by the ambitions of the English East India Company, or EIC, were not content to let the Dutch have their way. The legal disputes and treaties became as powerful weapons as the cannons on their ships. The Dutch state's intertwined relationship with the VOC was central to the protection and expansion of its trading interests. The VOC's naval power, backed by the state, was a bulwark against English encroachment. However, the EIC's relentless pursuit of trade routes and territories, including the coffee-growing regions, led to a series of disputes that would reshape the colonial world. The social fabric of Dutch communities in places like Fort Cochin was a microcosm of the larger VOC network. The society's personnel, often intertwined with local society through marriage and trade, was an example of the VOC's strategy of embedding itself in the colonial milieu. The Anglo-Dutch trade wars, with their shifting alliances and battles, were not only about who controlled the seas, but also about who dictated the flow of coffee from the exotic countries of origin to the bustling coffee houses of Europe. The legacy of these wars, as we shall see, is anchored not only in history, but also in the culture of coffee consumption that continues to this day. The role of the Dutch in the spread of coffee houses across Europe is not just a footnote in history, but a chapter that describes the essence of cultural exchange and the beginning of a new social paradigm. In the middle of the 17th century, the first coffee house in the Netherlands opened its doors in The Hague, heralding a new era of public discourse and social interaction. Within a decade, there were numerous coffee houses in Amsterdam alone, each of which was a center of intellectual exchange and trade relations. The rise of the Dutch coffee trade to worldwide fame came at a high price. Behind the flourishing trade and the wealth associated with it lay a grim reality of exploitation and inhumanity. The huge plantations in the Dutch colonies were often scenes of severe oppression, where the indigenous population and enslaved people were forced to work. The VOC's aggressive expansion into coffee production was based on the establishment of plantations operated under forced labor systems. These systems were characterized by brutal working conditions, long working hours, and little to no pay. The workers, many of whom were abducted from their homes and forced to work in a foreign and harsh environment, were deprived of their basic human rights. They were the backbone of the factory and yet lived a life of relentless drudgery and hardship. The effects of this exploitation were profound and far-reaching. It destroyed the local economy, changed social structures, and left a trauma that would last for generations. The scars of this period are still visible today as we grapple with the historical injustices and their lasting effects on societies. The ethical implications of the Dutch coffee trade are profound. Reliance on slavery not only facilitated the economic expansion of the Dutch Republic, but also left an indelible scar on the collective human conscience. The human cost of the coffee trade, measured in terms of the lives and freedoms of countless people, is a grim chapter in the annals of history. As we reflect on this period, 
it is important to recognize the full spectrum of its legacy. The prosperity and cultural advances it brought were undeniably marred by the atrocities of slavery. The echoes of that past still reverberate, reminding us that the luxuries of some have historically been the shackles of others. The effects of these practices are still felt today, influencing socio-economic conditions in the regions concerned and shaping the historiography of the countries involved. Recognizing this part of trade history is important to understand the full extent of the impact and to ensure that lessons learned are incorporated into current and future trade practices. The legacy of the Dutch coffee trade is evident today in the enduring popularity of coffee and ongoing efforts to source coffee beans ethically and sustainably. It is a historical example of the complexity and the importance of considering the ethical implications of trade. As we reflect on the legacy of the Dutch coffee trade, it is important to recognize both its contribution to global culture and its historical shortcomings. This balanced understanding encourages a more responsible and informed approach to the consumption and trade of coffee in the present. In our daily ritual of brewing a cup of coffee, we should take a moment to reflect on the journey of these humble beans. They have traveled through time and turmoil, bringing with them the story of ingenuity, domination, and the pursuit of a taste that defines mornings around the world. By understanding the past, we gain insight into the present and develop a deeper appreciation for the beverage that has, in many ways, shaped our modern civilization. The history of the Dutch coffee trade is a testament to mankind's relentless pursuit of pleasure and profit, and a reminder of how much a simple cup of coffee can shape the course of history.